morning. We're on our um, on our holidays again. Got away this morning fairly early, about um, quarter to seven, after raiding the bakeries at Port Perry for uh, bread. We're just outside of Port Wakefield at the moment, on our way um, to Adelaide. Uh, this video is called The Grampians. And um, we'll be meaning to uh, visit the Grampians for a while now. Uh, a very popular spot. Not really uh, very intrepid for the old intrepid explorer, but never mind. The scenery is supposed to be quite magnificent. But we're going down to Adelaide. Then we're going to down the, uh, follow down the coast uh, around the Coorong to uh, Robe. And, uh, then we're going to go to uh, South End uh, along the coast of Carpenter's Rocks um, to Nelson. We've been to Nelson before, haven't we? We've seen that video. And um, had the caravan that time. Then we're going to pop up to uh, the Grampians and then um, through um, a couple of little parks up there, uh, little desert, um, Murray Sunset, to Lake Mungo National Park. We didn't see that before because it was uh, too rainy. We didn't get a chance to get in, it was a bit boggy. So we're going to have a crack at it this time. Then we're going to go up to Lake Menindi on that boggy road that we didn't go up last time. And um, uh, up through Broken Hill and Bago. So that's the video in a nutshell. So, um, we'll see what this one brings, eh? We, um, we're fairly um, heavily loaded this time. We've got all the comforts of home. So, um, we should do well. This is... Um, uh, for all you people out there, this is L50614. His name is Hayden Twining, and uh, he's a shortwave listener. He's got his little QSL cards there. Don't know where he got them from. But he's getting ready today to uh, listen to the old Intrepid Explorer on 7.155 um, megahertz, lower side. And he's going to have a listen to us. Look, look at these. Um, he's got QSL cards he's uh, received from the old Intrepid Explorer before for various um, listening enterprises, but he's going to try and listen to us, um, listen to us on the radio, so um, I'll, 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 I'll take you outside, I'll show you his antenna, don't laugh, he doesn't like people laughing at his antenna, but we'll have a look. There's the wire going up there, and there's this Milo tin that me and Ed stirred, stirred this man up with something chronic about, it's, uh, it's a little bit rusty at the moment, see it up there among the twigs? It's soldered on the end of his wire, there's a little insulator there, but his wire goes down. Goes way, way, way down there. Into his shack, and it goes into his shack, which is just over there. And um, the old Intrepid Explorer put that up there many, many, many moons ago. And here he is, the old L506. What do you got to say about this Milo? Well, as you can see, it works well. It's got to be Milo, because Milo's full of goodness. And the thing that really makes it work well is the cobwebs. It's got to have cobwebs. We now leave the premises of L50614. I hope you remember that number, L50614. We're going to have a questionnaire afterwards, and we continue on our journey. And there goes the intrepid explorer. There's a car out there. No. How you going, Pop? All right. 
It's good? Mm hmm. Th this, is, this is Dad. And this is Joan. What are you doing <laughs> that for? I'm oh, just videoing. And uh, this will go on another movie. We come down through, um, through Langhorns Creek. Past the uh, Bleasdale Winery. And down to the ferry at Wellington. And we have to see the um, we got the um, ferry across the other side there. That's got to come back here and pick us up. So uh, we'll have to wait here a while, eh? Ningi's a very green little town. Um, probably green because there's all this fresh water in the way down, but and uh, out there we've got some yachts going up and down on the lake. Water's very shallow. Um, Jesus Christ could just about do a uh, walk across water on the Lake Albert. It's all, uh, it's all rather shallow. Yes. We're going along the um, coast road here, along the Kurong. The um, doesn't get all that much traffic because uh, the road's a bit of a milkshake. Uh, most of the um, trucks and that go uh, through border town Pinaroo or uh, up through uh, the Riverland when they go across to uh, Sydney and that. But the trucks to Melbourne go through Pinaroo or border town, one or the other. So uh, don't get many, uh, don't get many trucks on this uh, road down through the Kura. Not a bad little spot, is it, eh? Not a bad little spot. There's the old Miss and Dowdy out there. Still behaving himself. Uh, it's Saturday, by the way, so uh, you know what happens on every boat ramp in Australia. All the young lads, all the young lads, sit there with their boom, boom, boom music and uh, make a hell of a racket. So, uh... <laughs> oh, they have fun. We're just passing the Kurong, um, which is um, a little bit different from uh, Meningi's uh, Lake Albert. Because that's freshwater as part of Lake Alexandrina, which is part of the uh, Murray. And look at that out there. Um, the Kurong um, uh, is part of the sea, but um, this, the, the inlet is virtually cut off from the sea, and um, consequently, due to the shallow depth and the high evaporation rate, we end up with um, very saline water. Going along the um, track off the highway into one of my uh, favourite little camp spots. 42 mile crossing on the Kurong. It's very, very windy here. We're at the beach at 42 mile crossing. And the surf's up. See, I've got all this trouble of walking out here for you lot so I can video the beach. We didn't. We drove out here. There's the old Nissan Dowdy. She made it again. Yeah, last time I was here, I um, I walked out. But isn't that absolutely beautiful? Have a look at that. Old Jack Galpin loves that sort of thing. He loves his seascapes. Old Jack does. Sorry about the camera shaking, Jack, but it's very, very windy here today. You could have your surfboard out there, Jack. See, you'd get a, you'd catch that wave there. You'd be just running in on it now. As Jack Galvin would say, have a look at that. Isn't that absolutely bloody beautiful, you'd say. 
Go on, Jack, say it. Go on, it's absolutely bloody beautiful. There's another... Uh, the sun's quite low in the sky over there. It's almost as good as Jack's sunset, but uh, no, nah, not as good as Jack's sunset at Esperance. Well, it's getting fairly cold out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get back in the car and uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of the stuff I drove through to get out of here. good compacted uh, track in the middle here. We've just been sitting to that. We haven't let down the tyres at all. Piece of cake. Looks a little inclement. Beautiful quiet spot here. 42 mile crossing. You can hear the wind and surf running in the background. And we can have a lovely quiet night here. I've got my ear up, already tuned it in for uh, to speak to Ed tonight. And um, the, um, I've been into 42 mile cross. You saw that, didn't you? I've been in there and come out. Me, uh, me boxes are still going well up there, and everything's holding out well. And um, I'm having a fairly light tea tonight. I'm just boiling up some water there. And what I've done is I've got me um, got me two rolls, and I'll put a bit of. This is new. This is new. Get a pencil and paper, <laughs> pencil and paper ready. I got some uh, English breakfast thin cut marmalade. Get a little pot of that, and I'll, I've put a bit on there. But for um, the um, Thing. I'm going to have a taste of ages seafood luxa instant noodle. I'll put all the little jippers in there. And um, I told you about the campus friend, haven't I? We don't have, to, don't have to harp on about the campus friend, but that's good stuff. <laughs> um, it's so good, even the cat likes this stuff, alright? The cat likes a bit of that. Must be um, an intrepid explorer cat, eh? But anyway, we're. Um, we're, uh, there's another car parked over there, but I haven't seen Hyde nor hear of him. He's probably a, uh, a serial murderer or something. We haven't seen him, but he's parked over there. And um, we're going quite well. Looks a little bit like rain. Once I get me um, um, food done, and, uh, oh look, we've got a little friend. We had a dingo at... Um, at Hughes, didn't we, eh? Our little friend here. Perhaps, uh, perhaps he wants a bit of the campus friend. Should we try him on a bit of the camp? Well, I think we can try him a bit on the campus friend, couldn't we? Well, well, we'll break off a bit. Campus friend. Break off a bit of the campus friend and we'll... Uh... Here you go, boy. Cat likes it, the intrepid explorer likes it, everybody likes the campus friend, eh? Hey. He's probably gonna go across there and beat it on the ground to try and kill the <laughs> I didn't put chili on it, perhaps I should have put some uh, chili on it or something, but uh, he's having a hell of a good time there, eh? I reckon he's got a dirt he's putting dirt on it. He's trying to flavour up the campus friend. I don't know he's trying to get the taste out of his mouth again. We don't know what he's doing. Oh, look, look here, look here. What's this? What do you think this is? Popeye week. Hey? You want a bit of the campus friend too, do you? Alright, we'll see how we go. I don't know whether this campus friend is going to last too long here. Eh? The water's almost boiled, boiling. But we'll get a... We'll get another piece here of this stuff. Oi! Oi! Here! It's a bit of good film work there, isn't it, eh? What's he doing? He's doing the same thing. Perhaps they're just trying to get the taste out of their mouth. They go, Pah! what's that stuff?
they like they, they like their cheese uh, battered in dirt, sort of thing. It's uh, anyway. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we're at a good run today. Uh, we've done about 500 k's, and um, we're going to spend the night here, boil this water, pour that in there, eat that stuff, and uh, I think we're going to have a quite. Uh, Quite peaceful night here for me first night. Not that I sleep much on my first night anyway, but see you in the morning. Good morning. I thought I'd seen everything. <laughs> Fireworks and skyrockets last night. <laughs> Yes, a group of people who decided to let off some crackers. I thought I'd seen everything. I thought the sky was falling. For some, the radio dial is set while others are surfing the internet. They're logging on to Mac on a Sunday morning. I've wait all week for Mac on a Sunday morning. Good morning and welcome to the program. I'm standing on the end of the uh, jetty at Cape Jaffa and I'm huddled behind the uh, diesel bowers around here. And um, Cape Jaffa's uh, in, a, in a fairly good location down here if you have a look at the map. It's uh, one of the few places in South Australia if they get a, uh, a north wind it's actually a sea breeze. So, uh, and um, like I said in my video last time I was here, it's never windy when you're at Cape Jaffa. They don't get any wind down here. <laughs> it, 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 and they never get a sea breeze, it's always a gale. There's Cape Jaffa over there. And, uh, there's the old Nissan Dowdy sitting up there. The intrepid door. Where is it? There it is. There it is up there. But, uh, yeah. Never, never went to the Yes, yes. All very good, all very good. Oh. If you have a look out there, you'll see the, um, the, uh, the salmon farms. They, uh, uh, they farm the Atlantic salmon. Old Jack the Alpen likes seascapes. He likes watching the sea. He's just outside a robe. It's um, the reason I'm sitting in the car and it's raining at the moment.
rather uh, windy. There's the um, Rogue Lighthouse up there. And the sea comes in. Fairly rough here today. Robe's a very pretty little town. The, um, the harbour here is a naturally safe little uh, lagoon connected to the sea. And it's a very touristy little town. Very nice, very clean. All very good. Carolyn would love uh, Robe. Beachport, like all the other towns along here, is very green and clean. Out there we've got the Southern Ocean next to the caravan park there. And uh, over there that way we've got one of the um, one of the uh, saltwater lakes. So Beachport's on a little little neck of land coming out here and Beachport's out the end of it. Nice little caravan park there. Old Jack Galpin likes me leaving the camera running when I drive through the towns. He reckons um, he reckons it's good to see the see see the towns. Beautiful, calm bay, Beachport. It's always uh, very relaxing to watch the boats at anchor. I sat here and had dinner. Watching the boats out at, at anchorage out there. A nice big boat out there. Yes, Beachport. Quite a protected little bay here. It's still fairly rough out in the water. place called South End. It's sort of just a little town with a group of shacks. And, um, I learnt my lesson on the Cape Jaffa jetty. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to walk out on this jetty because I reckon some of the waves are just about touching the floorboards. There's a few of the nicer houses up there.
bit rough for your boat here, Jack. I just want to show you something outside. Absolutely beautiful. From uh, South End to Carpenter's Rocks, there's a little uh, four wheel drive track that goes through Canunda National Park. We're on that now, and uh, we'll see how we go. Um, the sands are fairly damp, so uh, we should be all right. We shouldn't have any troubles, but we'll see what happens, eh? By the um, looks of the track there's uh, been quite a bit of activity um, on this track this weekend uh, and also by the looks of the track a lot of um, a lot of the four-wheel drives um, have a look at those flares aren't they bloody beautiful this, this um, yellow and there's the purple ones there beautiful and the bushes the bush is beautiful this time of year um, what I was saying, yeah, the boys look as if they've been ripping through here at 90 mile an hour too and sometimes uh, when there's an easy track and there's a bit of sand, the, the boys have been going up on the sand rather than just driving through it, so it, uh, it looks as if it's a fairly um, popular run. they got these nice orange posts here, which is a damn good idea. And uh, yeah, here, here we got here we got an example of that. See, the boys have been going up on the rim there, you know, pretending like they're having a real tough time of it. You just go down here in the bottom, and uh, you got no sand, and you just drive around the corner. So I don't know, I don't know. Never mind, never mind. Oh, we got a bit of a dune here. We might have to rev up the old girl. Um, Nothing for get fully fully laden. The old Nissan here is over three tons, so we, um, we haven't let down our tyres at this stage. But then again, by not doing that at this stage on the wet sand, it gives us uh, gives it a lot of gives us a lot of uh, latitude. If we if we find we get stuck, we can always let down the tyres and uh, go back. Have a look at that scene in front of us, Jack. Have a look at that, mate. It's beautiful. Bloody beautiful. It's a beautiful run through here. Only, only just started, but it's absolutely magnificent through here. It's a beautiful um, forms. The track's only short, it's only 50 k's. And uh, we've already done a couple. Looks like there's a bit of, bit of blown uh, rock here. Well, I suppose the sand's got to come from somewhere, doesn't it? Have a look at that ocean out there, Jack. It's bloody beautiful. Bloody beautiful. Still very windy out here. I'm battling to hold the camera steady, I'll tell you that. How do you reckon your boat would go out there, Kev? I think I hear someone out there in a tinny with a flat battery. How do you reckon? That's how much it's raining. I'll turn the wipers off. No water getting on the windscreen. Look at that, the rain's coming in from the back of the car. And she is bucketing down. section here we pop down on the beach uh, 
just passed a convoy of six four-wheel drives coming the other way, which gives me a little bit of encouragement, um, but not a lot. You see one relieved intrepid explorer. Um, I'll make you a, uh, I'll make you a pack. I never want to drive on another beach again. All right. <laughs> yes, we um, we got stuck on the beach, which is my own fault. I didn't let down the tyres enough. Anyway, we let down the tyres to about 15 pounds and. Uh, and uh, I dug and dug and dug and I moved myself about 15 feet. But um, I think, uh, then I contacted uh, uh, Alice Springs Base via a dial-up um, radio link via Tasmania. And um, uh, I had them on standby anyway to uh, try and get someone to tow me out. And then um, by fortune another vehicle come along with the Todd family in it. And I'd like to uh, thank Michael, Scott, Robert and Nick who um, rendered uh, assistance to me. They, uh, they, uh, they couldn't uh, tow me out because uh, they were having a bit of trouble, the same as what I was having a bit of trouble. So. But um, we managed to let the tyres down and um, with everyone pushing and me going like this. It managed to move onto a bit of solid ground. We got clearance and we just did a UE and come back here. I'm now in the uh, one of the campgrounds for the uh, uh, park, Can, um, Canunda National Park, uh, near Boozy Gully, just out of South End. Um, and I'm quite happy. <laughs> quite happy that uh, I'm here tonight and not sitting on the beach waiting for the tide to come in. So, uh, yeah, we had a bit of hail a minute ago, and um, the rain's starting to wash the car, which is good. It's good, getting the salt off. We'll, uh, we'll be staying put here tonight, and the sun's just coming out now. There you go. Well, we've done our sked with Emma on the radio, and uh, we've been um, pumping up the tyres here. They've got to get the old, um, got to get the old ARB cool again because I pumped up three tyres and she's uh, she's a little bit warm. Just um, got me double boiler going here. See I got me a little gas flame there, I got me water in there. And what I got tonight? What have I got tonight? I'm back to me normal wheels, you'll love this, you'll love this. I got me uh, sanitarium country hot pot, a wholesome vegetable stew and I've put some, some curry powder and a bit of black pepper in. And uh, we got this, um, we got this stuff here. It's called couscous. <laughs> yes, it is. Look, 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 the packet, look. Couscous. See there. This is, um, it's made by uh, Ian Phillips. And it's couscous. It's got five sachets in it. And it says in here, ready in one and a half minutes. Pronto, oh no, one, pronto, pronto, 1.25, yeah, we're going to have a bit of a, a roll with that, this stuff's good, this stuff's good, get come out of there, like that, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to lift that out, because our water's boiling, see that, our water's boiling, we just drop that in, we um, find ourselves a, a fork here, and we just push that down, like that, and it's cook, cooking, 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 always cooking, cooking. And then we, um, here we got our stock pot there, and we got our little curry in it, and that's going to heat up with our water. And there's our couscous. No, I kid you not, couscous. Couscous, couscous. <laughs> yes, well, we'll see how good it is, eh? I had this at home, man. Um, uh, 
This uh, this product became famous on the um, Gooch Track 2 trip. But, uh, it's very hard to find in the supermarket. I had a Woolies and couldn't find it, but uh, you got to get the old uh, Ian Phillips couscous. Got to be Ian Phillips brand. Anyway, we've got that, and uh, we're just pumping up our tyres. See that? And we've been on the radio, and um, we got our weather weather stuff here, and it's raining. See that? Yeah, we got a bit of rain out here, but uh, we haven't got a bad spot here. Look at that. Tire pumped up, sand's starting to fall off. <laughs> I showed you before, um, <laughs> the shovel was all covered in sand, but uh, it's not covered in sand now, it's gone wash wash. All the, all the sand had gone down there. Anyway, we're going um, to cook that, um, that delightful meal up. That couscous. We're going to uh, open up the sachet when it's cooked. See, it's, it's, it says on the packet, when it's, uh, you're supposed to roll it over once or twice. You heat it up, one and a half minutes in the boiling water. And you take it out of the packet. You don't eat the packet. Right? You take it out of the packet and put it in there, mix it up, and it forms a bit of a, more of a meal. So it's good, good stuff, couscous. Yes. All right. You yeah, had a good day today. Well, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's always a good, it's always a good, hang on, I'm boiling again. It's always a good day. Anyway, must thank the Todd family again. <laughs> Otherwise the intrepid explorer wouldn't be here, he'd be sitting in the beach. Fishing for someone to tell him out. <laughs> right. So uh, we're going to have that. Yes, and... Um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't put this on video, but I was walking down the jetty at Cape Jaffa. This fellow was having a bit of trouble with his boat, so I thought I'd give him a hand, so I walked down on the jetty. And, uh, I got a wave of green water up to, <laughs> up to my knees in green water. Got soaked, you could say. So, I had a change of strides and... Uh, I um, got stuck in the sand today and sand gets in everything, doesn't it? And um, my trousers are wet and dirty again, so I can't do this too often. I haven't got enough strides. This stuff is absolutely magnificent. Good morning, good morning. Um, slept like the proverbial lock last night. Um, I'm starting to get used to the sleeping in the car again. Have a look at this uh, magnificent coastline. This place called Booty Gully, which uh, <laughs> suits some people I know anyway. But um, we've got a bit of a bit of a seascape here and. Um, Old Jack Galpin likes seascapes, so uh, we'll do a little bit of a pan around here. And, uh, yes, had a, uh, a good hot meal last night. And um, it's freezing cold and fairly windy here this morning. And, um, yeah, I'll um, continue on today and uh, go around uh, eventually get the carpet and uh, into uh, Melbourne. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of coast. I like going along the coastline. The coast is good. When I um, when I get to the Grand Bend, you won't see much of the coast, will you? There's another. There's this panorama for you, Jack. Your little boat would get lost out there, mate. Uh, just here we got uh, standing right next to us is uh, an Aboriginal bit. The Aboriginal used to uh, have a great, uh, have a great little feast here. These things on the, uh, on the shellfish and that. And uh, they were very polite. They used to just sit around and uh, throw the old shellfish when they finished over their shoulder. And uh, it just so happened that over the years, the 
the uh, farms, the shellfish grew around them, and uh, eventually they um, was in the, uh, the, the almost suffer from avalanche. So they had to move and um, start another shellfish. Okay. On our way to uh, Carpenter Rocks on the south coast. Pine trees uh, either side. We're into the um, uh, pine plantations of the southeast now. This little um, place is called Carpenter's Rocks. I've been here before, but um, it's a spectacular uh, little bit of coastline, and uh, the Southern Ocean comes straight into this little bay, and it's just protected by a reef. And um, it's virtually just a fishing village. Uh, just a small group of fishermen live here, and a few shacks and buildings. It's still raining, still raining on and off, showers through the day. Get in here and have a look at Port McDonald. And uh, have a look down there. It's raining a little bit. Um, you're not going to believe this. I'm in, um, I'm standing on a jetty in a sinkhole <laughs> on the way to Port McDonald. Have a look at this. Hey? We've got, a, we've got a swimming platform here and we've got a we've got a bit of a sinkhole here. We'll just go out and have a look. See there's the uh, swimming platform there. There's the highway. And uh, it's just in the middle of the countryside. Have a look at that, eh? Isn't that good? Take a swim there. Yeah, that... Um that spot was called uh, Little Blue Lake, and it does, uh, does remind you a little bit of uh, the Blue Lake at Mount Gambier, eh? Well, this is a little bit different. Um, finally reached the bottom. Actually, here. Yeah. We don't seem to see any more. This is the Glenelg River. And uh, sort of brackish fresh water. Uh, we've got a couple of landings over here. We've got landings there and houses with nice little landings over here. Because, uh, unlike the sea, the, um, the uh, fresh water doesn't all that doesn't go up and down all that much. Landings and tight. From here on in, we uh, we go into the Glenelg National Park. The um, lower Glenelg National Park has got beautiful little uh, spots like this all through it. I'm standing on one of the landing, it's called uh, Sapling Creek Landing. And uh, we pan around there upstream. And um, I said to me brother Kevin before, I said it'd be an ideal spot to drop the boat in here, but uh, I was reading some of the literature about here and uh, unfortunately I'm mistaken. I'm going to win there. Because um, there's a 10 knot limit on the whole creek, there's only certain sections you can go with 10 knots. Uh, I'm afraid it's not the creek for your boat, Kev.
Very popular with uh, canoeing parties, apparently. Good evening. Um, it's been a bit rainy today. And um, I'm just making myself a uh, cheese sandwich. I'm using the last of me... Um, uh, what is it? Product promotion. <laughs> My English breakfast thin cut marmalade. Thin cut means it's low fat. Yes, it's been a bit rainy today. Uh, we're at um, Nelson, um, Lower Glenelg National Park near Nelson. in one of the campsites called the Forest Campsite. It's called the Forest Campsite because there's trees here. Uh, we got for tea tonight, uh, early tea tonight, not rushed. We got a uh, harvest go oh, I don't know whether you can see that. I'm to bring it out here. We got a mild curry with beef and veg. Put that in there. And um, with that, we've got a bit of the old favourite um, and a bit of um, campus friend there. And it comes up like this. Bit of kicker and bit of uh, sweet corn there. And we've got it like that. I was very worried when I opened the tin because um, I saw these um, bits of rice in there and I read the contents and it said, uh, sure enough, it said... Um, Yes, contains rice, so I was very relieved with that. And um, if you think that's pure Coca-Cola, you got your, uh, you, 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 you're a bit, um, it's not pure Coca-Cola. Um, yeah, we've got the rain guard up. See, we've got that. It's wet. Yes, um, we're here at, um, it's a beautiful spot. Listen to the birdies. Eat going tweet. Hear that? Birdies go tweak. We here. There we go. And uh, Aiden, if you're listening, uh, look. You know what this means, don't you, mate? QSL night tonight. So, uh, oh, hang on. I'll go back a bit further. And uh, that's what your QSL card's going to look like. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Uh, yes. Beautiful. Have a look at this. Hey. I know I said that before, but listen to the silence. It's beautiful. Yes, um, I said to the lady, uh, uh, what campsites have you got? And she said, uh, oh, we got a few. And I said, uh, uh, how many is there all the others? She said, oh, there's one there with 14 at it. There's a bus group and another one. I said, if you whoop, uh, you know what you know what happened, don't you? <laughs> Boiling me water. Yes, and uh, we got a bus group here, and we got a uh, 14 people a year. And I said, have you got any ones that not many people go to? And she said, this one. So I'm here. Anyway, we're going to have a talk on the radio there later on. And um, tomorrow we'll be heading towards, um, or oh, could say finally heading towards the Grampians. Um, the weather reports don't look too good at the moment. So uh, we'll see how we go with the Grampians. I was driving along the beachhead and um, I got caught by um, the boggy in the sand and the, uh, the water was coming in over. Yeah, well, I was very worried about it at the time, over. I want to imagine, especially with a storm coming. No, I was in it, Ed. <laughs> I was in it. It was raining at the time, over. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. How did you manage to get out? Uh, did your way out, or the Intrepid Explorer got all wheels, all wheels, Bob? No, nah, the Intrepid Explorer had to get help from uh, help from outside, didn't he? Oh dear, oh dear. Now, 
now the truth is coming out. <laughs> and um, also the intrepid explorer caught a wave on the Cape Jaffa jetty, didn't he? No, 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 I mean a wave caught me. A wave caught you. Uh -huh. Not for you, caught the wave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the first night I had, I had the campers from Hell Ed. Um, you wouldn't believe it, but they had skyrockets and firecrackers. <laughs> I really know where you're coming, don't no, no. <laughs> Anyway, Ed, is there anything you want to say, uh, Fay? Anything you want to say for posterity? Besides, I'm very disappointed that Emma's not on tonight. Uh, no, no, this is why you're taping it, are you? Yeah, this is a tape for QSLing for Ed, uh, for Hayden. Oh dear, oh dear. So, do you think I should go and get the second operator? <laughs> it's, it's all right. It's all right. But um, yeah, no, this is Hayden QSL night of. Um, I've taken the photo for his QSL card and everything, so um, he'll. Um, I don't know whether I'll be able to put up the wire in the next couple of nights and it might fade away a bit, but he should be able to hear us tonight there, over. This is VK5 KTP Portable 3, talking to VK5 EDM in Port Piri, South Australia. Hayden, how'd you go? Good morning, mate. No, no worries. I missed the first part of your conversation. Uh, I was washing the dishes and I thought I heard you. And by the time I ran up there and got some volume in the old machine, and uh, I missed the first two minutes or something. Got a beautiful copy on both ears. And like you said, Ed was on frequency. Over. <laughs> that must uh, that must make it a lot easier for you. Over. Yeah, well, that's, that's the way we operate, isn't it? <laughs> Roger, no worries. No worries at all, mate. Uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed tonight, mainly because he was in the mood, he was in the mood, I was in the mood, and you could hear everything lovely and clear. And look, mate, I put top numbers on both of you tonight for clarity, for um, 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 uh, readability. Everything was perfect, over. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, I'm just putting you on video at the moment there, Hayden. Anything you want to say for posterity? Over. Yeah, Roger, mate. I just want to say have a good trip, mate. And I want to see those outtakes of yours. <laughs> I want to see the outtake and <laughs> have a good trip, mate. Watch out for kangaroos. Over. Okay, okay. Like I said, the next couple of nights I might be on the little aerial. So uh, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. No worries. Uh, over to you and out. Well, Roger, mate. Uh, one final over. That wire works really well on your end. And uh, at least I got the QSL night on really good. Over and out, mate. Catch you later. Bye. Yeah, 99. Thanks, Hayden. And we'll catch you. if he does his, there's his 99 and he's just hung up there we go that's how we do a telephone call out in the outback good morning, we're on our way again this morning, just thought I'd show you something that almost brings a tear to your eye um, have a look over there, see the, um, the plantations and the bare earth and everything's all being cleared and all that bush we were camped in, that beautiful bush over there with all the little animals and birds and everything, 
that just shows what the natural um, natural uh, land was like before white man came and um, we end up with that cleared land over there anyway. It's, um, I hope we save what we've got anyway. Um, it uh, just drizzled with rain all last night, it's still uh, drizzling now. And, um, we hope to get to Halls Creek today and uh, in the Grampians. All very good, eh? Well, we're um, we're into the Grampians. As you can see, the weather hasn't uh, improved, um, and the forecast is for more rain tonight. But. Um, I noticed the uh, vegetation on the road, the side of the road here, just north of Dunkerfield, is a little bit uh, less uh, thick or verdant, as one might say, compared to the Glenelg National Park. You haven't got the ferns and the uh, very thick impenetrable undergrowth. Here it's a bit more open. But it's still in stark contrast to the country you drive through. You suddenly enter the um, Grampians National Park, and suddenly, just like a switch, everything's uh, everything's back to um, the eucalypt forest. Very nice. Isn't this absolutely magnificent? The uh, the sun's out and um, the beautiful greens of uh, the moss and the, the, the uh, grasses and uh, we've got a few ferns there now. Absolutely magnificent. I've got my mate Hans to hang on to the camera here. And um, I've got a message for Dave Van. Dave Van de Dug in uh, Hallett Cove. Uh, Adelaide, I hate you. You told me about William, uh, Mount William. I, he said, drive to the car park, a little walk up the hill. Yeah, a little walk. It about killed me. <laughs> anyway, there's a bit to go. We've still got waterfalls here. So I'll uh, hand the camera around and um, we'll take it. We'll, we'll let you have a look over the edge here. Yeah. There's hands. He's been holding the camera for me. I don't know whether Hans is his real name, but... Hello. Hello. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Have a look down there. Hans is a lot fitter than what I am, by the way. <laughs> but isn't that... That's Jack Galpin once, say. Isn't that bloody magnificent? There's Hans and Griselda up ahead. They were holding hands a minute ago and skipping. I don't know whether they're making this fairly easy or not. Well, he's the intrepid explorer on top of Mount William, the highest, um, the highest peak in the uh, Grampians. I'll just take you for a quick pan around. It's quite a good view from up here. Old Hans and Griselda are on their way back down again. I kept on giving them stick all the way up here. I kept yelling out. Halfway, we're halfway now, we're halfway now. She kept saying, no, we're not halfway, we're not halfway, we, we, we're further than that. They're looking north towards um, Stall and Hills Gap. And uh, here's the uh, radio site out here. And beyond there, we got the uh, wheatlands, farmlands, and uh, canola belts all out there. Beautiful, the canola right now flowering, eh? And uh, we're on top here. There's north up there. There's Hall Gap over there. Sorry, I'm just making Hall Gap's that way. 
That's where we're going. There's the uh, track coming in down there. You see just a part of it following the power lines up here. Power lines to feed the site up here. Quite magnificent. Dave Van, you've got a lot to answer for, my friend. A bloody lot to answer for. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? There you are, Jack. That's your waterfall, mate. We'll call that Jack's waterfall, shall we? And um, I must uh, must put an apology in for Dave Van. It was, it was worth all the effort of climbing up there. Uh, I'll tell you what, the old intrepid explorer is someone fit. I even need a couple of spells coming down. So there you go. They've stopped people from climbing out on the uh, the end of the uh, balconies, but uh, I've volunteered, but there's no one here to take my picture, so uh, we won't be able to do that, eh? It's a fair drop to the bottom. I like the sign here, it, um, it says no jumping off the cliff, no trampolining and uh, watch out for your mum and dad, so I don't know what that means, we'll continue. <laughs> Mackenzie Falls, quite spectacular, have a look at that Jack, have a look at that. Good day. Makes your waterfall look a bit bottly, doesn't it, Jack? Those waterfalls are good, weren't they? Yes. We're, um, we're on our way to try and find a spot to stay for the night. I went into the information or the parts of the wildlife thing to say where I can camp. She said, oh, we've got a school bus here, we've got a school bus here, we've got a group of children here, we've got a, we've got a couple of tour buses here, and I said, where have you got that we can uh, be quite alone? And she said, oh, you can always bush camp for free. And I said, where can you do that? She said, oh, in any of the designated areas. And I said, where's that? She said, most of the tra most of the area is actually designated. And um, so I said, I'll do that. And she said, fine, go away. So <laughs> I went away. Uh, we've seen Mackenzie Falls. We've, uh, we're very, very tired tonight. We're very, very tired tonight. We're very, very tired. I sort of did that three times just to make sure it got through. I'm very, very tired tonight. Um, we went wandering all over the place today. We're now here at a little place called uh, Jimmy's Campground. Where's your campground, Jimmy? And uh, we've got stuff over here. This, I saw this campground... Um, when I was coming up here. Isn't that cute? And um, I thought that wouldn't make a bad campsite. Another one over here, he's, he's, he's looking pensive. You've heard me use the expression looking, oh, he's got an itch. Ooh, he wants a back scratcher. Anyway. We got uh, a few campers over there, but uh, they shouldn't worry me. All they're worried about is uh, chopping wood. <laughs> so uh, as long as they're warm, they'll be happy. Um, your new, uh, new this is coming. I got the last of me iced coffee milk. Now what we got in here? We got baked beans, well, um, and che cheesy tomato sauce and skinless frankfurts cut into little bits. If you've watched my videos before, which you should have, you'll know that that's one of my favourites. But um, I'm a bit of a loss. I've been, uh, you know, I've been trying to find a food recommendation for this trip. <sighs> I'm having a bit of strife. <laughs> um, <coughs> The food recommendation was going to be the fish and chips from Hall's Gap, but uh, 
they turned out so bad I had to throw half of them away. <sighs> anyway, well, I'm certainly, will, I'm sure we'll find a food recommendation. I wouldn't like to, uh, wouldn't like to leave this with a recommendation, would we? It's not bad for camping, though. Baked beans, cheesy tomato sauce, and skinless fruit. Well, I haven't put any curry powder in it, but uh, we'll see how it tastes. It tastes all right at the moment. Yeah, I went up to uh, Halls Gap. The place is full of foreigners. How come um, Australians don't become tourists? I don't know. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to have to avoid it. Um, I can, avoid, I can avoid it tonight, but uh, tomorrow night I'm going to have to uh, camp in Halls Gap because I've got to get up early in the morning and be in Halls Gap. So we might camp tomorrow night in the uh, caravan park. That should be something new for the old intrepid explorer, shouldn't it? Anyway, I hope you took notice of... Um, it was two kilometres up to the top of Mount William. Where was it? Uh, another kilometre up to the Jaws of Death. And another kilometre at the uh, Mackenzie's Foot. Weren't those falls good? Uh, another kilometre there. So I've been, I've been doing a lot of walking for you today. The old dogs are, uh, the old dogs are yapping tonight. Anyway, we're going to cook that up. We're going to, um, we haven't got any of the radio. Oh, we've got one radio. I didn't see it up there. We're going to call up uh, Ed later on. And we're going to have a bit of a tater tate with the old... Uh, the old Ed, Port Perry, have a bit of a talk to him and um, should have a good uh, good night's bunk down here as long as the kangaroos don't um, as long as the kangaroos don't keep me awake, eh? Not like the dingoes are Bloods, Bloods Creek boar three feet, from, three feet from the back of the car and started howling in the middle of the night what can you do, hey? What can you do? You're a beautiful little fella, aren't you? Hey? Oh, he got a bit of a cough. I got some cough mixture in the car. We can uh, we can fix him up with that. Good morning. Had a fine sleep last night. Beautiful camping area here, nice and quiet and peaceful. Haven't been troubled by flies yet. A few campers over there, they're, uh, they're pyromaniacs, they've got a campfire going over there. Just beyond the no camping sign, see that? Magnificent campsite here. <coughs> Jimmy Creek. Jimmy Creek campsite. Next to Jimmy Creek in Hall's Gap. I've just had my... Um, my instant breakfast and I like me um, Golden Valley there's there we are product promotions absolutely man there's a uh, magpie nest up in that tree I've seen the magpie go around picking up grubs and uh, went to a few trees and finally went up there bit of a fight going on amongst the corellas at the moment Cookaburra sound absolutely magnificent singing in the mornings. We must continue on and um, we will uh, we will potter around this morning and see what uh, see what we find, eh? We're on a little um, full drive track in um, in the national park here. Sort of a little trend. What's it called? It's called the, um, I'll get it here. What do we got here? It's called the, uh, Hainham Track. Well, there you go. Um, I'm uh, amazed at the amount of, uh, bush flora that's out in flower. You've got little flowers and that everywhere and, uh, little kangaroos jumping in front of the car and, um, we got a thing on a on a flower there called the uh, the blue streamer flower. 
It's a very rare uh, type of flower that um, flares out in streamers. Interesting little road. Yes, yeah, it's an interesting little road. And, um, we've got to be uh, we've got to be quiet along here. Wabbits. There's been a um, few water crossings on this track. No trouble for the old Miss and Dowdy though. I want to see what the centre of Falls Gap looks like. Here we go. This is about um, all there is of Falls Gap. You've got shops, you've got little um, tourists running around everywhere. The souvenir shop up there does a roaring trade. The cafe and takeaway food I thoroughly don't recommend. You get your fuel there, yeah, uh, you do a bit of tater tating there, and you get my phone calls there, and that's about it. All the rest of town is accommodation at every level. Sleeping out in the street on the benches here to the um, five star hotels. There you go, 60 kilometres an hour. The rest of all gap goes on for about three or four kilometres in groups and drabs. And um, you always see people walking around here and cycling. I don't know. These must be the fittest, fittest Victorians in Victoria, I think. The old intrepid explorer is not all that fit. Perhaps I don't eat enough beans. Well, what do you think of Hall's Gap? All very touristy, isn't it? Um, I'm back at my original campsite I was yesterday. Uh, Jimmy Creek Campground. And uh, I won't be on my own tonight. There's no one else here. Um, I thought I'd better show you what's about 20 feet behind the car just up there, got the car up there with so I'm going to camp, going to camp. Um, this is the creek, that, this is uh, one of the creeks that joined Jimmy Creek. Now it looks like I've got this all to myself tonight. This is not bad, is it, eh? It's all very good. We've got the birds up there making a bit of racket again. Good evening. Boy, have I got a meal for you tonight. Like me hat? Good, eh? Uh, by the way, if you're at Jimmy's Creek, be aware. Mm -hmm. Disgusting little things. Leeches. Got one. Um, what I've got tonight, we've got some craft quick pasta. For one, well, there's only one. I'm not. I'm not expecting visitors. <laughs> um, that mixes up. You mix them together, a bit of pasta, and I bang some tuna with um, what is it? John West Tempters tuna with ginger and like soy. Uh, put a bit of curry powder in there. These um, things here. These things here. What are they called? It's called uh, Selection from Switzerland, because we, we can't make cheese in Australia. Um, got one of them, and I banged in there, and the whole thing goes together like this. And you've got your tuna, and you've got your curry. i have to turn that down a bit. And you've got your pasta, 
we're, uh, we're eating very well tonight. Yes, it's very good. Um, what do you think of that creek, eh? Absolutely magnificent. Just behind me here. I think I panned you around last night. Oh, well, you can get panned around again. No one here this evening. You're on me lonesome. Except for the birds and the wildlife. And the leeches. Got a leech, so got a leech on my leg. Yeah, got all cleaned up tonight. Yep. Even got me alarm clock set up there. It's, it's a special day tomorrow. See? Got me alarm clock set up there. Yeah, special day tomorrow. I've got to uh, rise fairly early. I've got to get up around about 3am. Uh, 3am, uh, half past 3. have to get up. Yes, yeah, so uh, we'll let you know what that's all about tomorrow, won't we? Hey? Got a surprise for you. You look, you wait. Um, alrighty, we're going to have that um, magnificent pasta here tonight. And uh, we've even got tables and chairs now. I'm going I'm to eat very civilised tonight. And uh, no, um, I haven't got a tablecloth. Alrighty, we'll see you in the soup tomorrow, quite early. Good morning, it's quarter to four in the morning. Uh, we're on our way back to Hall's Gap. Just going out of the campsite now. Lucky there wasn't anyone else in there, otherwise I would have been disturbing them, eh? It's only a short run into the campsite from the uh, from the highway. We just take a slow run into Hall's Gap this morning. Has to be slow because all the little animals are out, eh? It does make a bit of a difference in terms of the speed with which it rises. Just let me get my compass. I'll come away from the vehicle because the vehicle affects the reading. Now, before you... Okay, right idea, but that is the back of the balloon. They don't look very different, but there are little giveaways that tells me that that's the back of the balloon. In the case of the back of the balloon, we need the pilot light Both? hoses. Just, no, no, just the black one, tucked inside. In this case, we don't need to. We just put the uh, cover on. Oh. Now you'll find that as you, as we fly, you'll all start looking out more, and it'll see, there'll be more and more room. It's not, not bad now. It's not bad. Actually. Okay, everyone, a moment of seriousness. Welcome aboard Odyssey. That's the name of the balloon. A couple of do's and don'ts. By all means, hold on to these leather uprights, the leather surrounds, and of course these rope handles, which you find all the way around the inside of the basket. You don't need to hold on to them during the flight, but if we have the winds pick up and we end up with any sort of a quick landing, uh, I want you to be aware of those. Please do not hold on to my gas hoses or my control lines unless I specifically ask you to. Please do not get out of the basket at any time or at any height unless I say it's okay. Particularly when we land, I still need your weight on board. Don't think, ah, oh, photo opportunity, jump out and go, because we we'll, could take off like a rocket. Good Very photo, though. Good <laughs> photo, but it's what, it, it is what's killed people oh, in yeah. the past, yeah. Someone killed at Macedon ten years ago because 
beautiful flight, perfect day. They landed relatively near power lines, someone jumped out, balloon took off straight into the power lines. Indeed. So very, very important there, stay on board. Um, please do not assume I've seen everything in terms of power poles. We look for the poles, not so much the lines. We then work out where the lines are going. So look out for power poles, trees, obstacles, and of course livestock. If we see livestock anywhere, we'd like to know about them. And uh, we've got two burners. We've got a very powerful but noisy one, this one. And that's what I do most of the flying on. But if we're anywhere near livestock or houses, we will try and creep over them with the less powerful but slightly quieter one, this one. That rate. And it's amazing, it, it doesn't spook the cattle. Um, just a couple of pointers. I think it'll be pretty gentle the whole way. But if it's not, you two are going to be the fall guys. Mm -hmm. And I want you, that will be the front of the balloon, and I want you to, and I will be back here by the way, with my foot up here on the landing. So I need a bit of a clear view there. And I need you two, both of you, thrusting your shoulder in, your right shoulder, your left shoulder, Trevor, into the upright here. Now the other shoulder. I need you to pin these two guys. So we fall on oh, right. So they fall onto you. I've got a good view there. You then turn around, Cheryl, and hang on to that. You can put an arm around there. Same with you, Barry. You can, you've got a handle there. You can put an arm around there. Yeah. Fall onto these guys. Doesn't matter. We're soft. <laughs> <They're soft. laughs> and on a fast landing, this can tip over, and it's nothing to be frightened of. It's everyone just loves it. And in fact, if we don't do it, and I fear we won't, I feel, I feel as though I've disappointed you and I've shortchanged you. But <laughs> we take what we're given. Um, and that's about the most important thing, of course, above all of that, is to bend your knees on the landing. Whenever, even on the gentle land, just bend your knees and let your knees take any any sure. any. Box. Uh, and apart from that, it's uh, pretty well ready to go. So we've done our radio checks, I've done all my checks down there. We're, we're looking pretty good and uh, pretty well set to go. So, um, okay. Okay. So you're all happy, ready to go. We've got champagne and biscuits on board. Let's go and commit aviation. That'll happen. Oh, that'll happen. <laughs> you have a tail land rover up? <laughs> yeah. See, I've seen little vehicles pulled up, but not right up in the air, but off the ground. Right. Okay, thank you. Where's he gone? Thank you, Phil. Take off. Up, up and away. Five <laughs> to seven. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hey. Well, we're... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one thing, of course, first thing is don't forget to look all around. Yeah, right. mm. uh, We've got that change of direction, it's confirmed by my GPS because we're now heading round to the northeast. We've got our southwesterly up here. So Trevor, while you're doing that, what I can do now is if you continue doing that, I'll rotate you and you can get 360 degrees. Just keep your, your video camera fairly steady and we can rotate round. You know I've got a morbid fear of heights, don't you? So if Phil stays down there, does he, at that place? He well, follow? Well, no, he's meant to follow us. Oh, and, um, depending where we go. Yes. I'm hoping to get up over towards Stall there. And we're still climbing at 400 feet. We've got quite a bit of a change now. I'm just giving Trevor a 360-degree rotation. This is not the camera rotating, it's the whole balloon. <laughs> Oh, 
was actually fine. Look, that was clear. Yeah. Mm. And then now that's just coming as we've made yeah. that rotation. We have, of course, gone slightly oh. higher. Mm. So we've probably up and down a bit of clear. Mm. Yeah, I don't often do panoramas, but I think it's worth it this time, eh? Yeah. It's interesting that you can do this. I can't do it too often because, of course, what is happening to make this happen is I'm pouring out hot air around the side yeah. of the basket of the envelope there, and it's it's like a jet propulsion. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually losing quite a deal of hot air. All righty. Three mm -hmm. horses down there. White one and three others down there. little jet burner on the sides go would be nice yeah. <laughs> and people have experimented with fans in particular and that they? sort of thing yeah. with mixed success they've had some success mm. start heading back towards the south maybe slightly to the south uh, east so we're looking for a landing landing spot sometime soon just to the south of us okay I'll keep that in mind And we come down. Powerful fair, fair way over the water. That's the sewage pipe. That's the sewage pond over there. <laughs> Yet nothing on the ground. Yeah, that's right. Looks like a few motorbikes are really really up here. What is that? We're going to stay here for the landing, you see. Ooh, I think I'm a little bit careful where I am here. I'm not sure they are friendly up there. It does look a bit deserted, doesn't it? There is a gate on the road, but I don't know if it's locked or not. Yeah, but I think if I can... That, beyond there, I have a feeling, might be... Enemy territory. <laughs> well, it's... Here comes the Pretty gentle. Okay. Just touch the trees up. Okay, and let it in. Come on, bike. Get down. <laughs> uh. Okay. Definitely something. I think we're going to miss his pumpkins. <laughs> okay, just bend your knees on the... Okay, look up. Okay, and now I'll pull that in. Now, better just check that I'm okay here. The map. And we have to check that that gate's not locked. Um, I think we're probably okay. Well, there's a soft ground. landing, I think. Yeah, it's beautiful. Odyssey to ground. Be. We've landed. Um, ground here, Odyssey. Um. Come back on the Pomonal Road. And you should see us on your right. 
we're still standing up, so we should just check that we're okay to, to be here and, and get in. The aforementioned, that's you, were duly and solemnly blessed, uh, in some cases with champagne, I think, mm -hmm. the, the orange juice. Offered hearty and vociferous congratulations by your pilot and by fellow survivors, so you are all allowed to that. <laughs> and in the case of you ladies, you are hereby proclaimed Countess of Hall's Cap. Oh, wow. Now it follows, therefore, and I better be careful how I pronounce this, that if the ladies are countesses, then you blokes are counts. counts of Hall's Gap. Now, these um, flight certificates, if we landed a bit faster, they'd be fright certificates. <laughs> these flight certificates take on added value. Um, because here this says, signed by mine own hand. This 17th day of October, in the year of grace, 2002, and they're signed by Professor Alan Ramsey. Is it what? Adventure, an aeronaut extraordinaire. Yes. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> something to be framed. Lovely. A little something for you. I don't know what you're going to do with them. I dare say something on the back of the loo door or frame them or put them in a bottom drawer somewhere. Countess Wendy, um, Wendy, you're just going to have to be Wendy May for the short term. Yeah, that, that, no, that's yeah, me. That's, that's oh, that is you. That is me. Oh, you've got to change his name. I've got the wrong one. Darren. Darren. didn't marry them all. I've married you all <laughs> prematurely, apparently. <laughs> Baker. Okay, well, nobody told me. Trevor. Thank Count you very much. Trevor. Oh, Thank oh, you. I see we're being filmed. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Count Trevor. So now, Trevor, you may insist from now on that all your friends and relatives treat you with proper deference from now on. So, well, that'll be a um, change, won't it? The uh, fishing rights and shooting rights, by the way, they may be subject to negotiation with the local incumbents. But what about the maidens? <laughs> well, and you've got designs on the maidens as well. Didn't see too many of them. Yeah. And Countess Cheryl. Thank you, sir. And Count Barry. Mm, thank you, Professor. So, um, well done, and thank you for coming, flying with us today. A very gentle introduction to on air learning.